Chat and Tuttle Vintage Typewriters, welcome to this tutorial video and taking a look at a Coronet Electric 10. I thought I would do an updated video. This is the original color on this one. Um, these do come in different colors. Uh, this happens to be a two-tone, um, kind of a blue, slate blue. It's very pretty. And um, a lot of times it'll be like a star mist blue is really what Smith Corona is known for. But um, this one, if you are a fast typist, um, at least this particular machine, but this is a good model also um, just for those of you who are fast typists and you want a typewriter that's going to keep up with you, this would be a really good one for you. Um, these are going to be a lot more affordable. Um, than most of other vintage typewriters. So let's kind of take a look around. If, you, if you're watching this, you probably got one as a gift or um, you found one at a sale or in the garage or in a shed and you're wanting to know what to do with it. So let me show you how to use it. Um, first of all, this is what the front looks like. And... Um, Sorry about that, got a distraction there. This is the front. So this is the Coronet Electric 10. The 10 means it's got the regular size carriage. I am missing a carriage release lever on the left side and that is very, very common for these. And you can just find something, there's a piece of metal sticking up here and you can just, uh, you don't need it since I've got one, I don't need the other one, but if you want to put something else there, you know, like a, dowel or a, something that's going to be just like um, stiff that you can use as leverage with on that metal piece. Okay, so um, this is your paper holder. This is your margin. You set your margins by pressing and dragging. Um, paper guide. Let's say you're going to be typing some postcards um, and you can pull that guide in just so you're loading it where you want it or you're doing a multiple page project, use your paper guide because you wanna make sure your margins show up on the same place on your paper. Because if you don't, maybe you'll load your paper a little bit here, maybe you'll load it a little bit over here, but that paper guide is to help you load it in the exact same spot every time. Over here is a paper release lever. We'll show that here in a moment. Um, I'm gonna move the carriage to the left, open it up inside, you're gonna see the type type bar basket in here, escapement area. Um, this is your spools. Uh, if you need a ribbon spool, you can just go to our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com and we've got ribbon spools for you there. Even if you have your original spools and you want fresh ribbon, we have an option called custom ribbon. Click on that and you send us your spools. We'll wind it with ribbon and send it back to you. Okay, I'm gonna load a piece of paper. I already kind of did a typing. Here, you can take a look at the font. I did a little typing test on it already. But um, you just set your paper there and you turn the handle. You don't have to shove the paper in. Um, it should grip it right away. If it doesn't, that means the rollers under, there's little rollers underneath this plate and, and um, there's they, they've even gotten They've either gotten hard or flat or something like that, and they need to be replaced. Okay, so um, this paper release lever on the right side, that just makes sure your paper is nice and straight where you want it. Make sure you re-engage it, and when you load your paper, make sure it goes underneath this metal bar. Okay? Ta-da! And then some people think, well, why would I move the carriage back and forth? You know, why would I need to manually do it? You just... I don't know, we just do a lot. <laughs> okay, so return handle takes you to the front of the line and advance, advances you to the next line. And this one, two, and three is gonna advance you either one, two, or three lines. 
depending on the spacing that you would like. So, um, and then for variable spacing, there's a black button over here. You will notice there's not one on the right side, but only on the left. And if you press that, you can kind of uh, um, set that wherever you like, because when you turn that handle, you hear that clicking? That's clicking every half of a line. And every once in a while, you're like, I, I want it kind of right in between those two lines. And that's where this comes in handy, that variable spacing. And you're like, I want it right there. And ta-da, okay? So down here, we're gonna take a look at the keyboard. Um, down here, you'll see a button that says set and clear. That's for your tabs. And this middle bar, that's your actual tab. So you tab, and I've got one set right there, and then you can either clear it or set another one. Um, down here on the keyboard, we have a color selector. You have black and red on this one. There are different color options you can find out there. Oh, let's go back to this. I haven't talked about this in a while. When you're loading your ribbon, make sure black is on top, red is on bottom. It is very messy when you're changing out your ribbon. There's just no clean way to do it. Um, and I do recommend that in the description below is a link to the original product listing. Go ahead and click on that. Uh, most likely this is going to be sold, but the photos will still be there. And I have a photo of this area right here, and that'll just help you thread it. When you do thread it, like I said, black is on top, red is on bottom. Make sure the black, the ribbon comes around the top and then around the bottom. Again, on the side, around the top and underneath. There's guide wires here, here, and then in the middle. And um, you're just going to have to, you know, get dirty and figure out how to thread your ribbon in. Um, sometimes this one looks like you thread through the top. There's a little like um, slit between the two metal pieces and so you'll have to slide your ribbon through that. Sometimes, and I can't tell, I can't tell because the ribbon's already in there. Sometimes that slit is gonna be on the back side or on the underside. You're just gonna have to look at your ribbon and um, try to figure that out. And then when you get to the end of the spool, it's not the end of the ink, you need to reverse the direction of your ribbon, which is right here. It says rib rev, that's ribbon reversal. You flip that, that's gonna reverse the direction of your ribbon. Flip it again, where am I? Okay, and you just go back and forth and back and forth because there's a lot of ink in that ribbon. Um, okay, so this is your on-off switch. We're gonna turn that on. And that sounds nice and good. It's not too loud. If yours is grinding, there's a chance that the motor, which is on the left side, is rubbing up against this metal piece. If so, gently, just kind of push gently from the right to the left, kind of like this. And that'll kind of move that cover just a little bit so that the motor's not grinding against that. That's just a tip, but again, please be gentle when doing that. Um, for your tabs, you just press it again and that'll take you to any tabs that are set. If you wanna clear a tab, you just press the clear button. Now there's a really good chance that your tab may not work. I would say it's about 50-50 on typewriters that we get in and, and I, I don't do the repairs, so I haven't really asked Rob, I guess I should, you know, can he repair tabs or he just leaves them? I don't know, but I just know about 50-50 the tabs between tabs working and not working on typewriters. Now, if you have a whole bunch of tabs set and you wanna clear the whole thing, then you hold down the clear button while releasing the carriage. And I just kind of go back and forth a couple times and then I release. And that should take care of all your tabs and if you want to set one, well then now just put your carriage where you want it. Hit set. And now your tab is set. Okay, so down here we have the backspace. Backspace does not erase. This is just, you mis make a mistake, you backspace, you can X through it, type through it, whatever you want to do. Um, by the way, there's three keys on these electric typewriters that have an auto repeat, meaning that if you hold them down, it's going to auto repeat. And that's going to be your dash, your X, and your period. 
And then also, I believe on the space bar on this one, if you hold it down, it'll power space, okay? So you've got your shift, your shift lock. So the shift lock, the lock does caps and symbols. Without the lock, you have lowercase and numbers. Margin release. So let's test the margin release. Okay, so my typewriter is stopping typing. It's not typing anymore. And the reason is I'm at the end of my margin. I've told it to stop typing, but I'm in the middle of this word. I want to finish this word. So MR margin release, finish my word and hit the return handle. So that is what that is for. Over here on copy set, it should determine how hard these type bars strike your paper. I really have never been able to tell much of a difference, but you can um, adjust that as you see fit, test it out if you want, and see if you notice a difference. So again, color selector, power, backspace, margin release, ribbon reversal, and um, really that is the basics of a typewriter. You know, just remember, um, this one particular one has to be plugged into the wall, but then the return is manual and you have to set your margins. And when you get to the end of your sentence, you have to hit the return handle and you have to hit it hard enough that it brings you not only to the front of the paper here, your left margin, it advances the line. So people, a lot of times are real timid. They're like afraid. They're like over here and they're like, Oh, okay, okay, but it's not going, you've got to push it all the way. So don't be timid with that. Um, this one only needs a really, only needs a very light touch. So if you have small hands or you want to buy one for an elderly person or maybe for a, kid, a child, this is a really great option for them because you really just need the lightest touch to type on it. Manuals are much more different than that. Um, so again, this is something that I recommend. This is what I call an everyday typewriter. I mean, they kind of all are, but if you're going to have kids working on it, or you're going to be doing crafts, or even if you want to write a book, this one is just really, really good for, um, regular use. And, um, it's any of the Smith Corona electrics from the sixties and seventies are excellent typewriters. In my opinion, this one. I'm really impressed with the um, Coronet Electric 10. It's just a great performing typewriter. All right, thanks so much for watching. You all have a great day and happy typing.